Right, uh, in this video we're going to talk about atmospheric pressure. In the previous video we looked at uh, pressure in solids and pressure in liquids. Pressure in solids given by pressure is equal to force over area and pressure in liquids being uh, given by uh, rho gh or rho hg. Now atmospheric pressure. Now the atmosphere exerts a pressure on surfaces which act in all directions because the atmosphere has got weight. At sea level, air pressure will support a column of mercury of seven, uh, 760 millimeters. This pressure is standard atmospheric pressure. Standard atmospheric pressure is also called one atmosphere or one ATM. Since P is equal to rho GH, if we say one atmosphere will be equal to 13,600, the density of mercury, right, the density of mercury uh, times uh, G, which is 10, and then times 760 millimeters converted to meters becomes uh, 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 0 0.760. Okay. Now, if you work this out, you find that you get uh, uh, 103 1,360 pascals and uh, uh, just to the nearest uh, 10,000 it becomes 100,000. Uh, Atmospheric pressure decreases with height because the weight of the air above becomes less. We do not feel atmospheric pressure because the pressure inside our bodies equals atmospheric pressure. Then we have this demonstration of the crushing can experiment. So what you do is you take a, a, an aluminium drinks can and then you boil water in it. The steam escapes from the top and pushes out some of the air in the can. When the can is turned upside down into a dish of water, it collapses. The steam in the can condenses into water which takes up less space than the steam, thus reducing the pressure in the can, uh, inside the can. Outside the pressure, it is now greater than the pressure inside, therefore the can crashes. Right, the mercury barometer. A mercury barometer is uh, constructed like this. You just need a column or a test tube, we could place the test tube upside down. And then we do have uh, mercury in a, a beaker or just a bowl. And then when you do that, you find that the atmospheric pressure will act on this side and on this side, thereby pushing the mercury up the column. So it pushes up a column uh, of 76 centimeters, which is 760 millimeters or 0 0.76 meters of mercury. That is standard atmospheric pressure. Now, uh, consider this point here, X. The pressure of mercury at X is equal to the pressure of the air on the surface of the mercury in the dish. So we talked about uh, pressure in liquid. So the pressure here is the same as the pressure there, which is the same as the pressure there at that depth there. The height of the column is unchanged if the tube is tilted. So if you tilt the tube so that it goes that elevation, you find that uh, the height will still remain at 76. Or if the width is changed, we talked about this when we looked at pressure in liquids. Air pressure varies from day to day. Then we will talk about the manometer and then we move on to talking about a hydraulic uh, system. Now, a manometer, this is called a YouTube manometer. It's in the shape of a U, right? So, uh, atmospheric pressure acts the same in both directions. So, which means that the both liquids of this pink liquid here will be at the same level. Okay, if there's no gas, pressure of gas supply there, this should be at the same level because atmospheric pressure acts the same. Now, if you have suddenly uh, opened a gas tip, you find this side will be pushed downwards while this side will be pushed up, creating a difference of H here or height difference there. So 
finding the pressure of the gas is simple. You just say atmospheric pressure plus rho GH, where H will be this height here. So rho is the density of the liquid, G is 10, and H is the height difference that has been created there. Now remember, for the gas to push the liquid level downwards this side, its pressure is going to be greater than atmospheric pressure. That's why we are adding atmospheric pressure to it. So if its pressure is less than atmospheric pressure, it won't be able to push the side downwards because atmospheric pressure will be acting there, so it cannot be pushed up if this pressure is less. So if to, in order for us to push this downwards, you need to have a pressure which is greater than atmospheric pressure. So that's why we're saying atmospheric pressure plus pressure due to the height difference. A manometer is a U-tube containing a liquid used to measure pressure difference. The liquid may be mercury or water. A manometer can be used to measure the pressure of the gas supply. The gas supply is connected to one side of the U-tube. The height difference between the liquid levels is measured. The difference shows the extra pressure that the gas supply has in addition to atmospheric pressure. So uh, in this case here, the height difference is 11. So you measure it from here. You're starting from 10 and then it's going to be 21. So 21 minus 10, that's 11, 11 centimeters. So we're going to have uh, 1,000. That is the density of water times 10 times uh, 0 0.11, giving you 110 pascals. So then uh, the total pressure will be atmospheric pressure plus that 110, which is going to give you 100,110 uh, pascals. If you do have any questions on this, please do uh, comment and ask wherever you need further clarification. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about is the hydraulic jack. Now, the hydraulic jack works with it, the principles uh, that uh, liquids are incompressible and liquids pass on to all parts any pressure that is applied to them. So I'm going to put, I'll, I'll do another video or I'll just uh, post another video just to show uh, the hydraulic jack and also the crushing can experiment. So the crushing can experiment, I'll upload that as well as um, uh, the hydraulic jack. The example of the hydraulic jack, an input force of say 12 newtons x on an area of 0 0.01 square meters. What is the pressure? Pressure is equal to force over area, which is going to be equal 12 newtons divided by 0 0.01. Okay. If the larger piston is an area of 0 0.1 square meters, what force can it lift up? So remember we said, the hydraulic jack works with the principle that uh, uh, liquids are incompressible, which means they pass on whatever pressure they have. So the pressure that has been produced at the small piston, that is the piston with a small cross-sectional area, will be the same area, uh, sorry, will be the same pressure as the one on the large piston there. So whatever pressure you've calculated there, you multiply by the area to get the force that can be lifted by that. I'll do some problems on that so that uh, uh, I shed more light to it. So for now, let me sign out.